story time about how I caught my husband cheating on me with our very young nanny. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I was sending me on Instagram. I'm 45 years old and my husband is 10 years younger than me. When we first got married, my friends kept telling me not to marry someone so much younger. They told me that he would eventually cheat and leave me for someone younger. I refused to believe this hope because my husband and I really loved each other. Or at least I thought. We met at a party a few years ago and he made the first move right away. He asked me out on a date and a few weeks later we became boyfriend and girlfriend. A few years after that we got married and after years of trying we finally got pregnant and had twins. They are both two years old now. My husband's job requires him to travel a lot. I own a really big salon and business is good. So we have a pretty good life and are able to afford a lot of things for our kids. Since my husband travels, my schedule has to be really flexible. I take care of the kids in the morning and then I go off to work, leaving them with the nanny. Our first nanny was a lot older and she had lots of experience, but she unexpectedly quit on us. So we had to find another one. We decided to look for one of those nanny agencies. We ended up interviewing about five nannies, but my husband was set on one of them. and She was the youngest out of all of them, 18. Oh yeah. And the most attractive too. My husband told me that maybe we should try someone younger so that the kids can have fun. And I said yes. The nanny would cover for me for about four hours a day when I was at work. Her and I started to get along really, really well. She would tell me about her boy troubles and I would give her advice. Part two is up. Part two of how I caught my husband cheating on me with our very young nanny. This comment is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. The nanny and I started to become really good friends. I even started telling her about the problems I was having with my husband. Little did I know that she was the problem. Like I said in part one, my husband travels a lot. This is what we would usually fight about. You see, it was actually really easy for him to travel less. All he had to do was pick a different region for his job. Instead of a six hour flight, it could have been a two hour trip. His excuse was that he would get paid less. When I was telling the nanny about our issues, she told me that I should just let it go and let my husband have his freedom. But the way she said it really bothered me. I ended the conversation and told her that she could go home. When my husband came home, I mentioned to him what the nanny said. I told him that I didn't like the way she told me that I needed to give him his freedom. He started to laugh and said, she's just a young girl. She's probably just saying what she thinks you need to hear. I decided to listen to my husband and I let it go. A week later, the nanny comes over to take care of the kids. By the way, as soon as she would come to my house, I would serve her a plate of food or make her anything she wanted before I left to work. When she sat down to eat, I could see her messages on her phone. And the name on the messages was the same as my husband's. I asked her why she was messaging my husband and she quickly put her phone in her purse. She didn't even know what to say. Part three is Part three of how I caught my husband cheating on me with our very young nanny. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. When I asked her why she was messaging my husband on her phone, she did not know what to say. I asked her if she was okay. Then she replies with, I just needed some advice for my car. She was so nervous. I asked her to pull out her phone and give it to me. That's when she said no and started putting up a fight. She told me I had no right to check her phone, but I didn't believe her. I ripped her purse from her hands and grabbed the phone. Before I even have a chance to look at the messages, she starts calling me fat and old and that my husband is planning to leave me for her. Honestly, what she was saying didn't phase me because my goal was to look at the messages. And she was pretty much right. In the messages, my husband promised her to leave me for her and that he was sick of me and the kids. I begin to scroll up and see all of the pictures that they send each other. You can imagine what they were. By the way, the nanny was only a day from turning 18. Yep. Out of nowhere, she starts breaking plates and glasses and verbally abusing me. She even said that if I didn't leave him alone, that something bad would happen to me. I grabbed her by the arm and threw her out of the house, but I kept her phone. So I called my husband from the phone. When he hears my voice, he hangs up the phone. When he finally got home, he got into a six hour fight. I made him leave the house, but apparently the nanny went crazy. She started stalking him and he had to get a restraining order against her. Serves him right. Her parents are threatening to press charges. I don't want my kids to grow up without a father, but I don't want to get back with him. What should I do? Am I the asshole for telling my fiancé I won't attend his brother's wedding not even three months before ours? My 22 female fiancé, 27 male, proposed back in August. Not even two months later, his younger brother, 22 male, decided to propose to his girlfriend, 22 female. My fiancé and his brother aren't that close and don't really talk, so it wasn't really communicated to each other that they were both planning to propose. We're older than my future brother-in-law and sister-in-law, and I wanted to get a head start in planning. We made the assumption that because my future sister-in-law is still in school and my future brother-in-law had just graduated college and getting his career started, that they would have their wedding later down the road. My fiance and I put our deposit down for our wedding venue. We get a call from his brother the day after we booked our venue and his brother was telling my fiance that he is planning to book a tropical destination wedding less than three months before our wedding date. Didn't put a deposit or anything, just wanted to let us know what their wedding planning was going to be like. My fiance kindly told his brother to reconsider because it's not even three months before our wedding and we already put down the deposit. This is where my future brother-in-law said they don't want to change their date because they've been dating longer than us petty bullshit. His brother asked if we would move our wedding date for them and my fiance said no because we already put the deposit down. Honestly, why would we accommodate to them if they aren't going to accommodate to us? I gave him an ultimatum and said if they go through with setting their wedding less than three months before ours, then I will not be going. My fiance said that's pretty fucked up that I wouldn't go to their wedding, especially since I'm married into the family and it would be right before ours. But personally, with planning my own wedding, I feel that I am not financially stable to go to a destination wedding less than three months before my own. Liar, 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 liar. You're just butthurt because you want to have your own spotlight for your wedding, which I get. Story time about how I got caught hooking up with my stepson. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My husband actually cheated on his wife with me. 
I started working at his company when I was 18. We started an affair and I knew it was wrong, but at the time I was very broke. He offered me a wealthy lifestyle and believe it or not, we fell in love. So when he and I got married, I was still 18. He was much older than me, he was 42. Everyone in town of course started hating me because I broke up the family. His wife couldn't even see my face. My husband already had two kids when we got married. One was 12, one was 15. So they were much closer in age to me than he was. The kids and I got along super well. I was their cool stepmom and we had a lot of fun. When I turned 20, the oldest boy came to live with us. And I think you already know what happens. My husband was always traveling for work. That means my stepson and I would be home alone most of the time. One night we decided to watch a movie and before I knew it, we were making out on the couch. From then, we basically started an affair behind my husband's back. Part two is up. Part two about how I got caught hooking up with my stepson. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. So like I said, my husband was always traveling for work. So my stepson and I would be alone in the house a lot. One night we were watching a movie and it just happened. After that, we couldn't get enough of each other. He even started skipping class so that he could spend more time with me. We basically turned into boyfriend and girlfriend when my husband wasn't there. When my husband would come home from his work trips, we would pretend like everything was normal. One day after my husband got back from one of his work trips, he found one of his son's socks in our bed. He asked me how I got there, but I told him it probably got stuck in there while I was washing the sheets. A few months passed by and my stepson and I are still hooking up. This is when I realized that I hadn't gotten my period in a few months. My period was always irregular, so I didn't think anything of it. My stepson went to the pharmacy to get me a pregnancy test. It came out positive, but the big problem is that my husband can't have children anymore. How was I going to explain this to my husband when he couldn't have kids? Part 3 is up. Part 3 about how I got caught hooking up with my stepson. This claim is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My stepson and I take the pregnancy test and it turns out it was positive. Well, I told my stepson that his dad wasn't able to have kids anymore. That's when he really flipped out. Then he tells me we should just tell his dad the truth. I told him let's not do anything until we actually confirm that I'm pregnant. We go to the doctor the next day and it turns out I'm not pregnant. But this made me realize that we needed to end the affair. Once we got home, I told him we needed to break things off. He begged me not to and we went to his bedroom. Not even two minutes later, his mother walks in. She catches us on his bed. She nearly has a heart attack, calls his dad and tells him everything. She took him out of the house and told me never to see him again. When my husband came back from his trip, he made me promise not to see my stepson again. I told him we should get a divorce, but he said no. Then he confessed to me that he's been having an affair too. Now he doesn't even let me leave the house anymore. I want a divorce. What should I do? Story time about one of the most embarrassing things that has ever happened to me in high school. So a little background information. I was in my freshman year of high school. Well, spring break was coming up. Well, the whole year, my friend and I hadn't been to one single party. So we decided that we wanted to try and go to a party every single day of spring break. Which was about to be super difficult because we had to worry about my strict ass parents and my neighbors. A little background info on my neighbor. My neighbor is this girl who's in my same grade and she literally hates my guts. I don't know why, but literally anything that I do, she'll go and she'll tell her mom and then her mom will tell my mom. Because my mom and her mom are best friends. But before we know it, Saturday comes around. And we go back to school on Monday. We did not make it to one single party. Well, later that night, we found out that one of our friends was throwing one. So around 11 o'clock, everybody's sleeping, and I walk out my back door, hop over my fence, and I start heading towards the road where my friend was going to be parked. But you know, who do I see fucking sitting outside on their porch reading a fucking book? My fucking neighbor. Life for part two. Part two about the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me in high school. So like I said, the bitch that I hate is sitting out on her porch reading a fucking book at 11 o'clock at night. So I crouch down so she couldn't see me. I run to the car and my friend and I finally go to the party. Oh, well, we get to that party and it's really boring. So we decided to go to a different one. And the party that we were about to go through was being thrown by the kid that I really liked. So I start hanging out with him when we get there. I'm drinking a lot, having so much fun. And I really have to go to the bathroom. And I didn't know where anything was at all. So I grabbed my friend and we're looking around everywhere for the bathroom. Because when I asked him, he was super drunk and really couldn't explain to me where the bathroom was. So we were pretty much left to fend for ourselves. But we ended up not being able to find a bathroom and this is where I had to improvise. So my friend and I go to the laundry room and we see the litter box in there for the cat. Well, at this point, I was desperate, so I just went in the litter box. Well, 30 minutes later, the cops show up to the party. And everybody had to hurry up and leave because we did not want to get underages. Like for part three. Part three about the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me in high school. So like I said, I went in the litter box and then the cops showed up. We all ran because we didn't want to get underages. I was able to sneak back into my house without anybody knowing. But when I get to school on Monday, everybody's talking about the party. And apparently the kid that I liked who threw the party, his parents didn't know that he threw one at all. And this was like during first period. So I went to text him and ask him if he was grounded because we were supposed to hang out the next day. And I realized that I am blocked. So I'm thinking, what the fuck? Why does he have me blocked? So I told my friend that he blocked me and she goes, it's probably because he saw what you did in the laundry room. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, there's no fucking way that he knows. Because there was a door that led to the outside in the laundry room. 
there were cameras in there so everybody saw this video of me people were posting it on their finstas posting it on their snapchat stories it was so fucking embarrassing not to mention the bitch that i hate who lives next door showed my parents the fucking video and i was grounded for fucking four months story time my boyfriend found out that his best friend got me pregnant it was my junior year in high school and my boyfriend and i had been dating for four months well the one night him his friend and i were all supposed to go to this party my boyfriend ended up getting called into work that night so his friend and i went which my boyfriend was fine with because he wanted his best friend to keep an eye on me but he also trusted us anyway so his friend and i ended up going to the party and that but the next morning I woke up, I didn't remember that at all. So fast forward, I find out that I'm pregnant. Well, me forgetting that I totally cheated on my boyfriend, I thought that it was his. Well, a week later, I get a text from his friend. And he's like, oh my god, what are we gonna do? And I'm like, what do you mean, what are we gonna do? So then he filled me in on the whole situation that I didn't remember. But I was like, there's really no chance of this because my boyfriend and I fucked like a million times and me and you fucked once. The real tea is that my boyfriend was black and his friend was white. Well, me being the s***ass bitch that I am, I was like, well, let's just wait it out. I bet it's not his. Like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend found out that his best friend got me pregnant. So like I said, my boyfriend was black, his best friend was white. And because I doubted that it was his best friend's kid, I decided to wait it out. Say it with me. Bad idea. So fast forward, I'm in the delivery room and I decide not to have my boyfriend in there. Well, let's just say good thing that he did. <laughs> bitch, whenever this thing popped out, it was white as paper so i was like to the doctor oh my gosh like i'm gonna have a panic attack please get the baby out of the room i don't want anybody around the baby right now so when my boyfriend came back in the room i was like oh we can't see the baby he's having some issues he's over here freaking out i'm having a fucking panic attack about what i'm gonna do and they brought my kid back and i was like that's not my kid and this girl looked so confused she was like uh oh okay and my boyfriend and i are laughing we're like oh haha that's funny then she comes back into the room and she's like ma'am this is your kid so my boyfriend started screaming and he broke up with me after that like how rude to just leave me with a kid by myself no i'm just joking i know that was pretty fuck Am I the asshole for not accepting my sister's relationship with my ex despite her having cancer as a teenager? My father married my stepsister's mother when I was four and she was three and we grew extremely close. She developed cancer when she was 14 and was sick for about two years but she's made a full recovery. During that time my parents were understandably overprotective and asked a lot of me. I quit extracurriculars so I could get a job and the money went towards her medical bills and so I could drive her to her appointments. I didn't go to dances and any fun activities had to include her but I did that willingly. Anyhow, I go to college and meet my ex Ben when I'm a junior. We fell in love and moved in together when we graduated, so we've been living together for three years. We were serious until I walked into my bedroom and saw him screwing my sister. Am I the asshole for not accepting my sister's relationship with my ex despite her having cancer as a teen? So I caught them doing the nasty and I broke it off, tears were shed, and he moved out. My sister apologized at first, but then gave me space. Last week she called and asked if we could meet up. She told me that her and Ben were in love and they were just telling me as a courtesy before they started posting photos online. I left her in the restaurant by herself and did not pay my portion of the bill. He later Venmoed me asking for the money. He told my parents and they called me telling me how disappointed they are for not supporting their relationship. They said because she had cancer as a teen, she never learned proper social etiquette and has a hard time meeting people. By that logic, that would mean she had bad social skills and that's not the case. They said if I don't accept the relationship, they might have to go no contact with me. Am I the asshole for telling a man he's too old to have a toddler? I, 51 female, recently went on a date with a 54 male. I knew he had two kids and while we were eating, he tells me their age is 32 female and 3 male. That's a deal breaker to me. At my age with grown kids, 25 male and 26 female, the last thing I want to do is to be bothered with a man with a toddler and all the potential drama. The mom is 30. I went on a date because I was having fun, but when it was over, I had every intention of letting things just fade away. Well, he called a couple days later wanting to go out again and I tried the whole I'm not ready thing, but he kept trying. Finally, I told him that the fact that he has a toddler is a deal breaker. There's too much possible drama and I'm too old for that. Am I the asshole for telling a man he was too old to have a toddler? Finally, I told him that the fact that he has a toddler is a deal breaker. There's too much possible drama and I'm too old for that. Hint, hint. 
He told me I was being a hypocrite since I was a single mom. I said a single mom of two grown kids. He kept repeating himself and I kept repeating myself. Finally, I told him that having a baby at 51 shows a stunning lack of judgment and one that I don't need in my world. He was quiet for a minute and told me that was a messed up thing to say. He then also added that I should have told him this before he paid for my dinner and that it was a bitch move then hung up in my face. So am I the asshole here? Am I the asshole for sending a video of my uncle's stand-up to his wife after he made horrific jokes about us? I, 22 female, found out my uncle Robert does stand-up at amateur open mic nights. I was sitting at the bar with my girlfriend when he was announced, and I didn't realize he was at the bar but was excited to see him perform. I told my girlfriend who he was, and she was like, oh yeah, he's here a lot, you might not like this bit. I asked why, and she said he talks shit about the family and wife all the time. At first it was funny, but it got really mean fast, and I was crying by the time we left. He talked about me and my cousin, his daughter, and joked that he was surprised that both of us turned out gay. He even questioned if we had experimented with one another. Am I the asshole for sending a video of my uncle's stand-up to his wife after he made horrific jokes about us? He said he was surprised that me and my cousin turned out gay and he questioned whether we experimented with one another because Lizzie was a gross freak and I was too fat in high school to score anyone. It was the grossest thing I've ever heard anyone say about me. He then made a joke about how my diet of muff let me lose weight. Amber found a video of his performance from the person running the bar and we anonymously sent them to my cousin Lizzie and my aunt Sharon. I confessed to Lizzie that I sent the videos to everyone and she got super upset with me and said her parents are likely divorcing because of this and I should have warned her. I didn't really care. Am I the asshole for not paying my neighbor's vet bills? This week I hosted a family gathering and I live out in the country so it's not exactly common for whole properties to be fenced. Usually it's just fences for animals. Since it was nice out, we decided to eat outside. After we were done eating, we left some desserts and fruit out. Figured it'd be fine leaving out and it was also covered. After we ate, we went to the small pond that's on my property for a little bit. We got back to where the food was left and the neighbor's dog was on the table eating the food and had ripped the covers off. Got my neighbors and they apologized but asked what the dog had eaten. Am I the asshole for not paying my neighbor's vet bills? Some of the food their dog ate was toxic to dogs such as chocolate and grapes. They started freaking out and rushed their dog to the vet. Yesterday, they asked me if I would pay the vet bills. Their dog survived but needed extensive care and had racked up quite a bit in vet bills. I offered to pay a quarter, but they wanted it all since the food the dog ate was mine. I said it wouldn't have happened if they kept their dog off of my property. I said I accidentally got out and they didn't mean to, but I should pay. I then made a remark about how they should pay for the food their dog ate. Am I the asshole for not wanting to name our first child black? Me and my partner are having our first child, and I stupidly made a deal with them where they got to name our child if it's a boy, and I get to name our child if it's a girl. Well, we're having a boy, and the names my partner's coming up with are not for me. I've managed to convince them to forget our deal, but they do still have more say than I do. Anyway, the name they're eager to use is Black. We wanted something different without being too hippy-dippy, and this is the outcome. Their reasoning is that Black is just a cool color, and they think it sounds really cool. I think it's a bit odd because we're both white. Like, yeah, it's a color, but it's also a race and a pretty sensitive topic. They think that logic is absurd, and we're not Americans, so race isn't a huge deal over here. Am I the asshole for refusing to see my dad even though he's really sick? I'm two years older than my brother. My parents said they didn't have the money to put me through college, but because they had high incomes, I couldn't get any financial aid. I moved out, got a job, and started working. I ended up starting college the same year as my brother did. I assumed my brother was in debt by going to a really expensive private school, until I saw him post about having his school paid by our parents. I asked my mom about it, and she fessed up that they were paying for it. It made me so angry, and I have not visited home since. I worked so hard for my grades and don't understand why they don't care. My dad has cancer, and it's really bad. Mom's asking me to come see him, and he's upset too. My brother called me a horrible daughter who's a greedy bee, but I am worried. Am I the asshole for making my wife return the $900 necklace she bought herself using my money? My wife's birthday was a couple weeks ago, and she was very honest and vocal about what she wanted. It was a bucket bracelet, and I bought it for her, and it cost me $300 using my own account. Since money's tight, this gift broke my back, but I still wanted her to feel appreciated on her birthday. I gave her the bracelet, and she was thrilled. She said she admired it and put it on right away. Later that night, after the birthday celebration was over, I found out that my wife purchased a $900 necklace using my account. I asked why she bought herself a gift knowing I already purchased her a gift and asked why she used my money. She nervously said she didn't know if I was going to get her anything. Am I the asshole for making my wife return the $900 necklace she bought for herself using my money? She said she used my money because obviously the gift is supposed to be coming from me. I was puzzled as she explained her reasons. I was mad. $900 was a lot to spend on a gift. Besides, I already bought her a gift, so this wasn't necessary. I said that because I did get her the gift she wanted, she needs to return that necklace. 
She refused and argued that I was being heartless and selfish. I told her I'd do it myself if she kept refusing and she said that she'd return the $300 gift. I said no because I never agreed on getting the necklace. She returned it and kept saying I'm a controlling jerk with no regard for her feelings on her birthday. Am I the asshole for telling my stepdaughter she needs to live at her father's house? I've been married to my wife for 8 years and my stepdaughter 16. We got along great until my wife and I had more kids. I have always treated her the same and have known her for more than half of her life and I'm always proud to go to her dance competitions and school events. But it's gotten bad for the past 4 years. My wife loves her daughter and they're very close and has always made time for her despite the younger kids needing more time. We do special one-on-one -on -one with her and make sure the family events are not completely catered to the younger kids. I really hope we're not doing anything wrong. Months ago, my stepdaughter was lashing out about her responsibilities and accused her mother of being a W-H-O-R-E. Am I the asshole for telling my stepdaughter she needs to live at her father's house? She said she cares more about her husband and little kids than her and that she wants to be treated like an equal member of the family. I didn't intervene because this was clearly a mother-daughter incident. I just wanted to be there to support my wife and also be there for my stepdaughter. She then yelled at me and told me I was nothing more than the man her mom was effing. I said she needed to calm down and being disrespectful is not the way we solve conflict. Then I asked her if her dad tolerates this behavior and she got mad. I said she should stay with him until she apologized and my wife fully backed me. We went to her father's to see her and she refused. She's also now in therapy. We also surprised her at one of her dance competitions and she cried and her coach told us to leave. Am I the asshole for telling my wife that her 10 year old daughter was more mature than her? Me, my wife and daughter went to an all you can eat restaurant today. My wife has a habit of ordering too much food at restaurants and not eating it fully. Oftentimes the restaurants don't allow doggy bags so the food gets wasted so I decided to take her to an all-you-can-eat so she'll be able to only take as much as she wants. She piled the food up on her plate and I told her to add less portions and finish all the food and come back later if she wanted more. I mean our daughter was doing just that. She said she totally finished her food because she was really hungry and I kept quiet. My wife wasted half her plate and the manager made us pay extra. After we put our daughter to bed, I told my wife that she acted very immature at the restaurant and our 10-year-old daughter had the sense to gouge her hunger. Am I the asshole for not letting my boyfriend take $150 an hour tennis lessons? My boyfriend and I are in our 30s and we've been together for several years, but he doesn't want to get married. I found out he's apparently decided to have tennis lessons and I figured alright. I was looking through the bank statement and he's apparently had 4-hour sessions that have costed $2,400 total. Now let me clarify that we are not rich. He doesn't get why I'm mad and he says that if he had a job, I wouldn't care. No way he's right, but I'd still be uncomfortable with it. He says he enjoys it, but it's $150 an hour and for some reason they're four hours long. $600 a session. I really can't afford him and I did tell him to spend my money like it was his own, but this kind of contradicts that. Thinking where to go, I wonder every night. Swimming through your love and mystic lullabies. I don't want to say out of pride but when i think of you i get a kick inside wanna say hi when you're not fine wanna kiss you and make it right let me dance with you beneath the sky i could be the one to say good night i've seen you at the party dancing so divine your body on my body it never felt so right you thought i was a but had a different life Your body on my body It never felt so right Never felt so right